everyone welcome back to my channel so today I am going to swatch a bunch of distress inks that I purchased they've been on my wish list for a while and I just decided to take the plunge and I actually bought quite a few um, I didn't get all of them but I did start buying those and the oxides but today we're just going to do distress ink those are two different things oxide and ink and I can do another video down the road getting into all that but today I want to show you everything I bought for my distress ink haul and then we will swatch them out together and kind of be a learning curve together because I'm not very good at inking a long long time ago I purchased this little tin box and these small they're called mini distress inks and I used to use them for my planners and bullet journals. And then I noticed people used them in coloring books. And I was like, gosh, why didn't I think of that? So I went and bought the bigger ones, the 3.3s. I only had this, what, eight of the minis. And they still have ink in them, which is good because I can use them as fillers. But I ended up buying the bigger ones and I bought quite a few. They're all right here. I'm going to get an official like case for them, but for now they're in here till the rest arrive. And I'm storing them upside down because the super awesome Zucchini Kitty on YouTube, I had asked her about it and she said store them upside down. That way the ink pools at the top, which I would have never thought of. <laughs> so it's one of those obvious things where you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But I did get quite a few, and I have them kind of piled up by color family. So we've got our blues we'll get out. Our, I think these are my green pile. Uh, my red and orange pile. I'm going to pull them all out of here. My purple pile. This is pinks. And I think these are just like all my random brown and neutrals. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to get like a tub or something to store them in once I get all of them. I actually ordered more from uh, Ranger Ink. That's the same place I got this printable. They have it for free. And they should come next week. So I'll do like a part two. But their printable is easy and it's almost like a checklist that way you can see what colors you have left and then also you kind of don't have to hassle with making a printable <laughs> and they're in color order and it's free so why not use it right so with the haul I also bought some tools I got a bunch of these brushes don't know if you've ever seen these they work really well a bunch of different sizes for putting your distress inks down especially on large places but I'm not going to use those for swatching because you need to wash them and obviously I'm not going to wash and pause every color so I bought a set of the little stampers and these if you're not familiar with them pull this off to the side have these little pads on one end and this is your pad you dip into the ink and it, oops that velcro is coming off that's not good it just velcros on and off so here's the Velcro, you got this little felt thingy here, clips back on. This one you can tell I used a little green, I was testing it out. And then I bought just some extra of these felt things. They actually came, this whole thing came together as a kit, so it's kind of handy. But let's get swatching. So I'm going to try and start with these colors that are near the top. I won't go in order. Ripe, pers uh, ripe persimmon. Oh man, can't even say the word. But anyway, it looks like an orangey color. Let's get one of my clear ones. I will have to change these out when I'm swapping between colors, of course. Let's see, let's find ripe, ripe persimmon. Oh, okay, goes right there. All right, so we're just gonna get a little ink on our stamper thingy 
It never looks like a lot on this, and then you go to put it on here, and you're like, whoops. And I'm not really worried about staying in the lines, so if you're thinking, gosh, how sloppy is that? I'm just here to, as long as most of the color is primarily in there, that's what I want. That's a pretty color, actually. Okay, so let's get that one out of the way. Just storm up here. Okay, so next we have, let's do this one first. Abandoned Coral. And I have no idea what these colors look like, by the way. I haven't swatched them yet. This is all for you guys. Okay, Abandoned Coral is right here. The green was so deceiving when I put it down, it didn't look like I had a lot on my pad. And then I put it down and that's why there's a huge blotch there. It's like, oops. So I do want to see like, I want to have a darker end and a lighter end, just so I can see how it looks when you pull it out. That's a pretty color. It's definitely coral. And over here I'm just wiping the excess ink off on a white paper. That way, if I'm in a similar color family, I can use the same part of my stamper pad. Okay, so barn door. Let's see, where is barn? Oh, it's right next to aged coral. I didn't get the small detailing tools. I need to get those. It's like a country red. What's nice about these though is that they're they're quite like you can layer them over. See, they're not covering my text or anything like that. And that's the cool thing with your coloring books. They're not going to cover the lines. Wipe that off. Oops. We can get into our pinks. All right, so we have, oh, this one's a lighter pink, so let's do that. Next we have our spun sugar. Oh, that looks so bright on that pad, makes you wonder. Yeah, I really suck if I get like some duds in here. <laughs> this one doesn't even look like it's coming off. It is, it's just really light, okay. So spun sugar. Yeah, that seems like it's awfully, is it supposed to be that light? There we go. It's hard to tell though if it, this pad is dry or not. Might have to investigate that further. very light pink even when I push it around okay I'll have to look and see if that one's really supposed to be that light or if there's something wrong with that pad so picked raspberry that one is oh right there yeah I can see this one's showing up on your little inker Ooh, look at that. That one is bright. And very pretty. I think I even have, yeah, you know, I have a Distress Ink Mini in Spun Sugar. Interesting. Let's see if I can get any color off of that one. Let's clean this off real quick. In fact, you know what? I'll get a brand new one just for sponge sugar using my little mini here. And let's see if I have a, a dead pad or if it's really that light. Nope, it's really just that light. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, now... Let's get to our purples. I think 
Let's start with this one. I think this one will be lighter. So Victorian velvet. It's down here. Okay. Make sure we're on camera, of course. It's like a reddish purple color. It's very pretty though. Okay. Um, let's grab this purple. Okay, so next is Seedless Preserves, which goes over here. This is going to be a darker color, I can already tell. Hey, it looks just like grape jelly. That's a pretty color though. Look at that purple. And like I said, I want it dark, but I also want it light. So I want to kind of see the variants. All right, wilted violet. Where are you? Wilted violet. Of course, when you're looking and it's in, oh, <laughs> it's right there. That's what happens when you do this on camera. It's gonna be a brighter purple. I can already tell. Very pretty though. Although I have to say, this purple's. If I was picking a favorite, all right. Oh, that lid doesn't wanna. All right, so next up, clean that off a little, is Dusty Concord, which goes down here. This is definitely going to be a dark one. Like I said, I'm not very skilled at using these little thingies here, so I'm not going to stay in the lines, but hey, if, as long as I get the, the gist of the color... That's a pretty purple, too. All right. So let's pull this off. Put those to the side. Let's do our greens next. So I have a couple. Uh, get one of these little... Actually, I think this one had green on it. Yep, okay. So I already did mowed lawn right here, and that's this one. So we'll just put that out of the way. Let's do cracked pistachio, which goes right here. All right. I mean, the lid makes it look like it's gonna be a neon green. And the lids do somewhat resemble the color, but it's kind of like with a colored pencil. Can't really judge it by the paint. But they are pretty close. That's a pretty cool color. I don't want my arm to keep crossing in front of you guys. <laughs> Alright, so next is Iced Spruce, which goes right here. That one doesn't go on very thick. But it's definitely like a sagey color. Okay. So next we have our crushed olive. Oh man, that lid's on there. Ooh. Okay. Crushed olive goes right here. I already see that color on there. Definitely in yellow green color. Okay. Pull this off and save this as our green pad. 
Now we have a ton of blues. I'm going to keep like the lighter ones so that those go first. Well, a lot of them are pretty light. Okay, so let's get to new. And, all right. So tumbled glass looks to be the lightest one. We'll find out though. It goes right here. This pad is moving all over. Huh. I feel like I got some defective ones here, guys. It's a pretty color that would be good on for skies and stuff. It's very pretty sky like blue. See that? I hope it translates well on camera. Alright, uh, the next slide is speckled egg. I'm hoping this looks like a robin's egg blue. My favorite color. First I need to find it. Oh, speckled egg. Okay. Let's see what this one looks like. bad. It's kind of like a, it's not really a robin's egg blue, but it's definitely a tealish blue. Okay, next let's go with our peacock feathers, which is right here. Ooh, this one's juicy. It's interesting, some of these pads like are extra inky and some not as much. That's a very pretty color. Now, you guys will have to tell me if some of these are supposed to be not that. I'm kind of concerned with some of these, how hard they are to get ink off. I might exchange them. Alright, Salty Ocean. Um right here in between these two. Use the other half of this pad. This looks like a darker one actually. Oh it's very pretty though. I don't know if you can see that when it's in between but it's a very pretty color. It's almost kind of fun just dotting them on there and then they mix together. That's it kind of gives you an idea of what it would look like or how they would play together. All right, um, Mermaid Lagoon goes right here. And I did order a bunch more. So like, oops, got a little too dark there, hello. When we're done, I'll show you the ones we're missing. I wasn't able to get all of them though. And that's just because Ranger was out of stock on him. Otherwise, I was going to order all of them. But uh, right now, you get like free shipping on an order over 50. So I had to make sure to order at least 50. Let's see. Stormy Sky goes right here. I hate when they do like minimum shipping. That goes with any company, not just Ranger. It's like, ah, all right, fine. But I know it's costly for them to ship if you don't if you order like one thing so I get it I'm not saying I don't it's kind of like a grayish blue but that would be really pretty as a background also oops keep knocking this out of the way all right so now we're on to our chipped sapphire which goes right here Ooh, this is going to be a dark one. I could tell the second it got on my ink pad. <laughs> or my little inker here. Well, that's very pretty, though. That would go good with a lot of these blues. Alright, get those out of the way. Take this off. 
probably be less conservative and use more pads, but I just, I've been using this spare paper, which by the way is like having a really cool pattern on it, <laughs> um, to wipe it off, so save myself on the pads. So let's get to my kind of neutral colors. Let's start with the antique linen. That one goes right here. I saw this one used the other day on a color along. I was so excited because it is that perfect off-white yellowish aged color. See that? It's perfect. Oh yeah. You could use it for books, backgrounds. I knew I was going to love it when I saw them using it. All right, um, let's do Wild Honey. Wild Honey is right up here. The old paper one I'm really excited to get. I did order that one, just hasn't shown up. Ooh, that's a pretty orange for fall. That would be a very good one for fall. If I can get the lid on. Okay, I'm gonna take off this. Only bummer is I'm getting ink all over my finger and my new nails. I'm painting my own nails now because I can't go to the nail salon. And oh yeah. yeah, I'm not very good at it. All right, aged mahogany. That one goes up here. That lid didn't want to come off. Okay. So this is like a reddish brown. It looks like. Oop. Yeah, it's a very pretty color though. Very deep red, like a blood red. I could still use that for Halloween. Alright. Then we have ground espresso, which is down here at the bottom. Alright. I don't know how dark of a brown this will be, but I have a feeling it's going to be pretty dark. Yep, pretty dark, but it's still nice. So yeah, these are the ones, oops, my little rainbow of colors. So even though it looks like I bought a ton of ink when you're like stacking up the ink cases, once you swatch them out, you're like, oh man, so many to buy. So like I said, I did order quite a few of these that were in stock on Ranger inks. Um, they come next week, so that'll be my part two. But so far, I would have to say, if I was picking favorites, the Seedless Preserves one and Tumbled Glass are two of my favorites right now. And I can't wait to get the others. They were out of stock on, I know, Faded Jeans for sure. Oh, and there was another one I really wanted. Oh, Squeezed Lemonade. They were out of stock. But I did order quite a few, and then next week we'll swatch the rest and see what I have left to buy. And I'm going to look into some of these. What's interesting is the speckled egg wasn't coming out really well, but once it dried, you can see it. Same thing with the spun sugar. So maybe that's just how those ones are. If you guys have these, let me know. But I would love to know what your favorite Distress Ink color is. It doesn't have to be one of the ones I swatched. It could be one of the ones I'm missing. And just let me know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you're notified when I post new videos. And yeah, I will be back with a part two. I'm also going to do a video on the rest of my fall books. I am waiting for um, Coloring Heaven to send me my two, I ordered three books. One was not fall themed. It was their annual annual 2020. That showed up and the other two didn't. So I was like, what's up with that? <laughs> so I don't know when those will come, but once they do, I'll do my fall one. 
But for now, we've seen my Distress Ink colors, and I will hopefully post the other ones next week when the rest come in. Until then, take care, guys. Thank you.